Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to discuss how to map transformations in math. Now, there are a variety of transformations out there in mathematics, and transformations, as you might imagine, are graph shifting. Um, more often than not, you're going to be exploring a lot of different functions as well as their graphs, and one convenient way to talk about graphing is being able to look at how graphs shift. And so you can, if you have a good grasp of the transformations, you can look at, actually look at a function, and instead of having to make a table from scratch every time out, you can actually shift the graph based on what you know about transformations. So we're going to talk about the different transformations here and uh, see how each x and y coordinate is affected. So first, we're going to look at vertical transformations. Now vertical transformations are where the y coordinates end up being affected. You either shift the graph up or you shift the graph down. But in vertical shifts, the y coordinates are either going to be added or subtracted depending on the situation. Now as you might imagine, if there's got to be a vertical transformation, there has to be a horizontal transformation, and you're absolutely right. Horizontal transformations mean that the graph can either shift to the right or to the left. Now, as you might imagine as well, because horizontal deals with the x-axis, it's the x-coordinates that are going to be affected, and you're either going to add them or subtract the x-coordinates as well. Now, as you'll discover later on in your studies, the x-coordinates actually work a little differently than what you might expect. You also have what's called reflections. You can have reflections about the x-axis or the y-axis. And when that happens, you either have what's known as a vertical reflection or horizontal reflection. And in reflections, it involves changing of the signs. And depending on what kind of reflection it is, either the x-coordinate will change sign or the y-coordinates will change sign. And the last kind of transformation we're going to be talking about is the vertical as well as horizontal stretching or shrinking. Now what that means here is the graph can either vertically grow faster than normal or grow a lot slower than normal or horizontally stretch or shrink depending on the situation. Now where this impacts things is if it's a vertical stretch or shrink, it's the y coordinates that are multiplied or divided depending on the situation. And if it's a horizontal stretch or shrink, it's the x coordinates that are either multiplied or divided. Now, different functions will have different kinds of transformations, which means that you can either have one transformation only, two, sometimes all four, depending on the situation. But you may have noticed that I wrote these transformations in this particular order, but that's because this particular order is the way you should look at the transformations. Why? Because of the order of operations. The order of operations, your dear Aunt Sally, is always watching over you when you're doing these transformations. And this is the tra order that it has to go in. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, stretching and shrinking, reflections, and vertical. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's an overview as to how to map transformations in math.